ladies and gentlemen, food insecurity and inflation is hitting the rich Western nations, probably the worst right now. And unfortunately, I wish I could say it would get better. And they said it's hitting the rich nations even worse than some of the less developed nations on the earth. I'm going to go ahead and play this audio from the Wall Street Journal. Food insecurity hits rich countries as inflation makes basics unaffordable for many. Some 44% of adults polled by the UK recently said they were buying less food as the pain from higher prices spreads beyond less developed nations. By Sarah Ruberg and Alistair MacDonald. Photography by Tom Jameson for the Wall Street Journal. July 8, 2022, 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time. London, rampant food inflation is roiling the world's least developed nations. It is also hitting poor people in rich countries. Matsen Trailen Norga, a food bank operator in oil-rich Norway, says it is distributing 30% more food compared with the same period in 2021, a year that in itself saw sharply higher demand because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Food bank usage is on the rise in the U.S., too, while grocery stores report customers there are trading down, buying more store brand food and avoiding more expensive meat and fish. In Britain, the pain has been especially stark. The U.K.'s overall inflation rate hit 9.1% in May, compared with the same month a year ago, the fastest rise in prices for a member of the Group of Seven, the Club of Rich Economies. Food prices rose 8.5% in May. We're seeing real food poverty for the first time in a generation, John Allen, chairman of Tesco PLC, Britain's biggest grocery chain, recently told the British Broadcasting Corporation. A steep fall in the value of the British pound following the country's vote to exit from the European Union had already made some imported food more expensive in the past few years, making the more recent price increases especially hard to bear is the fact that Britain has enjoyed a long period of relatively low food prices. A handful of national supermarket chains compete against each other fiercely. Last month, the average price of cheddar cheese, a UK staple, was up by 59% from last June, according to the Agriculture and Horticulture Development Board, a trade body. Milk was up 27% in April over last year, according to government data. Those sorts of prices are now unaffordable for many. Some 44% of adults polled by the UK's Office of National Statistics in May said they were buying less food because of the higher prices. Food banks are seeing a third more traffic since the start of the pandemic. All right. So overall, people are cutting back on the amount of food purchases that they're making. Now, this can't be good during a recession. You know, during a recession, that's when you want people to spend. Without spending, you cannot bring your economy back. But right now, the average households uh, across many of the Western nations are reducing how much food they purchase and how much they spend. So there have been uh, big cutbacks in the average UK household. And people are not only cutting back, but they are skipping meals just so they can make it through the food shortage. So there was a survey that found 7.3 million adults in April were living in households that they were saying they were either low on food or did not have food at all and could not physically afford food you know, in the past month. So you can see where starvation is definitely going to be on the rise. The government, and this is over in the UK, has provided cash payments and tax cuts for the very poorest to ease the rising cost of living while introducing longer-term measures that will ease food supply chain bottlenecks. So I guess it's just bad all over. It doesn't matter where you live, if it's here or anywhere abroad, you are still struggling with the same things. 
So, you know, and of course they keep shifting the blame to Russia invading Ukraine back in February. Um, we all heard about the war, but we didn't expect food prices to climb like this. This is what one person is saying. The war is now rattling through kitchens around the world. The cost of grain has soared following Moscow's invasion. And while they are now well below the height, uh, their prices are still bolstered by the Ukraine inability to properly export its harvest. So Ukraine produces over half of the world's sunflower oil in Britain. The majority of grocery stores are putting limits on how many bottles customers can buy at one time. High energy prices exacerbated by the war have added to the cost of transporting and manufacturing food. The pandemic, and meanwhile, has disrupted the industrial supply chain. So a poor countries, the food is a, a large part of the household spending. It is 59% in Nigeria, 28% in Mexico, according to the trading economics the and economic and financial indicator a tracking site. In the UK, it's 9.4%. But in rich countries, the smaller a person's income, the more they tend to spend on food. The US, for instance, households in the lowest income spend 27% of their income on food, according to the US Department of Agriculture. Those are the highest incomes. Uh, that spent 7%. So, I mean, it's not shocking. Economically, it, it's really hitting the globe and um, not only with food, but gas and all kinds of expenses. And if you don't have a big income to begin with, you're not going to be out here spending a lot of money right now, especially now. You know, and we're definitely seeing this worldwide. But y'all, please tell me what you think. I mean, this is just another sign of how bad it is. And I can just see starvation going up um, worldwide in places that you've probably never seen a lot of starvation. And I believe a lot of that will ultimately change. But y'all, please tell me what you think about this video. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.